What's up, everybody? Crazy Mike the uh, tonight is a beer time with Mike, and you know I thought I would change things up uh, in most of my my videos, my beer times with Mike's. I'm drinking an IPA um, tonight. Thought I'd do something different, something a little fun, because you know you can't always be serious 100% of the time. You know, life's too short for that. So tonight I have a pump house blueberry ale. Sorry, a blueberry flavored beer. Crazy, eh? That's really what it says. So it says here, uh, a gorgeous blunt ale with the wonderful essence of fresh blueberries. I make this a true original. This national award winning beer combines only the finest barley, malt, spicy hops, and blueberry flavor to create a distinctive ale that can be joined, enjoyed year round. It's from the Pump House Brewery Limited in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Yeah. Never had a, uh, a blueberry flavored ale. I've had an iced tea uh, beer. That was so freaking gross. Disgusting. Iced tea and beer do not go together. And I've had a uh, oh, what was it? Uh, Bud Lime. Bud Lime I like. I really like the Bud Lime, but this is the first time I've tried a blueberry ale. It's a 473 milliliter can, 5% alcohol. So let's crack her open, shall we, and get to the subjects. Oh wow, right when I open the can I smell blueberry. Nice, blonde. Wow, that's clear. You guys seeing that really well? Let's see if we can get the whole can in. Uh, we might have to put the rest in later. That is a very big head. It's bigger than my head. <laughs> There I am. <laughs> um, well, did not expect such a large head on that one. Nice clear color. I can see right through here. You can smell a faint blueberry, but right when I opened the can, it was a blast of blueberry smell. But Wow, that actually is not bad. Um, I was expecting more of a, a sweet taste than it is. It is a little sweet, but not overpowering. Uh, like I thought it was going to be really sugary, almost like a, a, a cooler or something. But that's pretty good. Wow. Now, very crisp, clean. It's not bitter at all. It's a very easy drinking beer. Hmm. That is not too bad. Not too bad at all. Well, let's get to some subjects, shall we? So, uh, Stevo Traverse. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that was a pretty good one, eh? 
Steve-O want to know. Weed, what's your opinion on it? And do you smoke it? Well, Steve, you know, I've asked uh, Ted Barris this a couple times about, about, my, about marijuana. And, you know, I think marijuana should be treated <laughs> just like alcohol. Um, you should use it responsibly. You should, uh, I think you should be a certain age to, to use it. And I think it should be taxed. Um, I don't think it should be illegal. Because, it, you know, booze has killed more people than um, marijuana has. Cigarettes has killed more people than uh, marijuana has. Both alcohol and cigarettes are illegal. You know, so why not legalize marijuana, right? Yes, I do use it. Um, not very often, though. Um, really not very often. Um, I probably drink more than I smoke marijuana. Um, it's like just a once in a blue moon kind of thing. But, yeah. Um, I don't think that teenagers should be using it. But, it is what it is. If they're going to use it, they're going to use it, right? It's the same with alcohol and other uh, drugs and cigarettes. Um, you can try to say no, but they're just gonna they're gonna use it. <sighs> so, yeah. Um, Zomb thirteen. If you could form a metal supergroup um, consisting of a singer, rhythm guitarist, lead guitarist, bassist, drummer. Who would you choose? And don't be lame and say Slayer. <laughs> Already a super group. Oh, oh, oh cheers. Oh, cheers, Zomp. Um, and yes, you're right. Slayer is a super group. Now he wrote a disclaimer on here. He said every member <coughs> must be from a different band must be alive today. Um, rip, R.I.P. Rest in peace, uh, Heinemann, uh, Jeff, Jeff Heinemann from uh, from Slayer, of course, and uh, Daryl Dimebag from Pantera. Um, so yes, I made myself a list because um, I didn't want to forget. So for lead vocals, we have the great Ian Fraser Kilimister from Motorhead. Now the guy's got that freaking killer freaking voice. Um, that that this raspy freaking tear through concrete voice. Um, on lead guitar, I have Zach Wild. Um, played with uh, Ozzy Osbourne, and he's also played with uh, Black Label Society. Well, that's his band, anyway. Sorry, Black Label Society. Rhythm guitarist, I have Jim Root, um, aka Number Four from Slipknot. Um, been Slipknot and Stone Sun. On bass, I have Robert Trejo. Trejo, I think that's how you say his name. Anyway, he's played with uh, Black Label Society, um, Suicidal Tendencies, and right now playing with Metallica. Um, he replaced um, Jason Newstead, um, who I think is a, is a douchebag. Douchebag. Uh, Jason News Newstead, he did not belong in Metallica at all. Um, he was just a short replacement for Cliff Burton. <clears throat> and on drums, I have Chris Adler from Lamb of God and uh, 
Oh, my freaking writing is so bad. Blinded science. Sorry about that. I have really bad writing. But, uh, yeah, Chris Adler from Mom God on the drums. So, yeah. Um, I have a, uh, Lemmy and Motorhead. Motorhead. Zach Wild uh, from Black Label Society. Um, Jim Rue, number four, number four from Slipknot. Robert Chirijo and Chris Adler. Yeah, now I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. A lot of people are going to say, oh, that's a shitty list. It'll never work. It'll just sell the crap. But you know what? This is my opinion, not yours. Your opinion, you can do on your own uh, beer time show. This is beer time with Mike. So, yeah. Um, AMC Royals. My good buddy AMC Royals. How's it going, man? <laughs> you know what's going on, eh? Oh, I love it. Hint, hint. I love it. Anyway, it's an inside joke. I know who this MCA, AMC Royals is. Not going to tell you guys. You can torch me all you want. You're not going to get it out of me. All right. Want to know about my childhood. Oh, boy, this is going to be a good one. Well, my childhood, you know, had a, it was pretty tough. You know, it was really mixed. Um, my family life was great. I couldn't have asked for a better family. Um, my parents always made sure there was food on the table and clothes on my back. I was never abused. Um. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was great. But on the other hand, um, going to school was a nightmare. I was bullied constantly from oh, oh, that was weak. Um, kindergarten all the way to grade twelve. Yeah, so, you know, it, it sucked, and school just was a nightmare for me. I, I hated school. I hated getting up in the morning to go to school because I knew <laughs> there would be somebody that would just torture me at school, and it wasn't the... Uh, the average name calling um like how it is today, you know, like you see kids getting teased by names and and stuff like that. You know, it was it was bad. I was getting beat up every day. Um I was getting threats from People, uh, guys saying that they're going to kick my ass. I was getting pushed in lockers, locked in lockers. Um, yeah, school is just not a good experience. But, you know, I had, you know, and I had maybe two or three friends growing up. Um, lived in a small town in South uh, Saskatchewan. And, uh, you know, it, well, my family life was awesome. My school life was just horrible. So it was just a, a mixed emotional roller coaster. <laughs> um, my brothers did as much as they could to protect me against these bullies. They tried to um, teach me how to fight. But I guess it was probably in the around grade 10, grade 11 is when I started to fight back. You know, I, I had enough of their, their bullshit. And that's when I was starting to get into fights. And I was getting into fights well, at least once a day in school. And because these bullies 
were jocks and they were on the basketball team or the volleyball team or badminton team <laughs> yeah we had a lot of sports in our school um but because they were on these teams and they were star players they were never punished it was always me that was punished I was always the one that was serving detention because I wasn't getting fights. Even though it was the bullies that were starting it. So yeah. You know. Um, I love my uh, my family life. I uh, you know my father drank a lot but he wasn't he was you know, I, I got raised by the belt. If I did something wrong, I got the belt. And I deserved it. Um, kids these days are soft. They're afraid of getting spanked or getting belted. And parents are afraid of doing it too because CPS, Child Protection Services, will come in and take their kids away. It's it's stupid. It's pathetic. Um, you know, there was times where I raised hell when I was a kid. But when I got caught by my parents, they punished me. And it was severe. But I deserved it. I don't, I'm not mad at them. I don't hold a grudge against them. Because I, I admit, I fucked up. <laughs> I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. And I got punished. Um, but my dad was never excessively abusive, if that makes sense. Um, like how you see with some, some abuse cases where the kid gets put into the hospital because the father was so abusive. That was never the case. No, thank you. Let's see where else for that question. And cheers, buddy. He knows what it means. He knows. Nocturnal Gremlin. Talk about the hot sauce uh, I've made. Um have a little contest best name start kick uh, a kickstarter um yeah he wants me to start a uh, start a kickstarter go uh we must talk more about my hot sauce that i made um you know i thought about doing a kickstarter but you know, you know i'm so i hate asking people for for handouts um, when the, a gentleman um, um, his name was Daniel Harmon he said he was gonna send me a few things and I thought okay it was gonna be you know a small package you know pack you know just a small package like this or, or something like that <clears throat> he ended up sending me a giant freaking package thing weighed a freaking a ton and that blew me away. And it, it kind of felt, it kind of made me feel a little bad because this guy spent so much money on it. And you know, I hate when just strangers spend money on me. This guy really doesn't know me. He, he's never met me. And yet he's willing to spend all this cash on me. <clears throat> So, you know, I don't really think I would start a Kickstarter account um, for my hot sauce. Um, I'm a grown man. I can get a job, and I can work my ass off to get this hot sauce off the ground. And not only this hot sauce, but many more flavors of hot sauce. A few months ago, I made a hot sauce. I used uh, scor uh, Moroga sco sorry, Trinidad Scorpion. I don't really think there's too much of a difference between the Trinidad, Trinidad and the Moroga. Not too sure. But uh, it was the Trinidad Scorpion. Um, what else was there? 
Achalokias, habaneros, and ghost peppers. I used all those peppers with some different seasonings, garlic, uh, onions, and the stuff was freaking fantastic, I tell you. Um, Millie, I know it feels, it sounds kind of like I'm blowing my own horn, but I have never had a hot sauce as that, that good. Um, the vinegar, um, taste in it was very low. You could just, just make it out. It wasn't overpowering like a Tabasco or a Louisiana hot sauce. Um, but yeah, you know, if I do uh, the hot sauce thing and I get it off the ground, I'll definitely, uh, hold a little contest. Um. I don't want to do it right now, so don't don't be going in and commenting what kind of uh, the name or whatever. But you know what? I I think that's a great idea. Um, if I do get this off the ground, I will hold a contest, and the best name will get a prize. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll wait until I can get. All three, like maybe three hot sauces off the ground, and um, the best, the best names for the three hot sauces will win a bottle of each. What do you guys think about that? You guys think it's a good idea? Would you guys like a, a hot sauce made made by me? Made by Crazy Mike D. You'll have like Crazy Mike D. Okay, you make these something. Um, scorpion death pepper or, or hot sauce or you know, something like that. But that's another, uh, that'll be another time. So, but uh, yeah, Nocturnal Gremlins, that, that's a great idea. I love your idea and I think I might do that. <clears throat> now, John M. Oh, John M. Now, if you don't know John M., he commented my last beer time with uh, Mike, and he wanted me to do a uh, an Angel of Death screen. Um, if you don't know Angel of Death by Slayer, listen to it. It's pretty much right in the beginning. He just lets us scream out, and it, it sounds like he's just falling in the pits of hell. Um, John, I am not forgotten about that. I would definitely be doing that once I, uh, I'm able to. Um, but I just I don't want to do it when there's so many people around the house. They're going to think I'm freaking nuts. And, and yeah, I, I don't want to rock the boat right now. Cause, but I will do your screen. Anyway, you wanted to, uh subject. What do you think of the power group metal band Dragon Force? Like, dislike, never heard of? <sighs> Dragon Force, man? You think I have never heard of Dragon Force? Listen to Dragon... If nobody out there has ever heard of Dragon Force. Either pick up um, Guitar Hero and try your hardest to play Dragon Force uh, through fire and uh, fire and flames. It is probably the hardest song on that game to play. Go to YouTube after this video, watch through fire and flames, the music video. It is freaking insane. Dragon Force, uh, I've, I've never heard a band play that fast as they do. Some people say that they just speed up their music in a studio. No, I don't think that's true. I think that's them. Because, you know, you go to a concert of theirs, they're going to play the same. No. So, yeah. Um, I, I love Dragon Force. Um, through fire 
and Flames was probably my favorite song of theirs. And the first song I've heard of theirs, and uh, I played it thousands and thousands of times. Um, no, they they are they are a, a power group or metal. They're power metal, uh, kind of speed metal. They're not like Metallica or Megadeth that are uh, with thrash metal or very heavy metal. Um, they are really, really quick on their riffs. Um, their solos are just great. And you got these guys just shredding on the freaking guitar, and you think that these car, these guys have, oh, they're just going like crazy. How the fuck do they do that? Um, but yeah, um, I really love Dragon Force. Awesome, awesome band. So, Ooh. Ooh. sorry about that. Well, that's not a bad beer. You can faintly taste the blueberries by the it's, it's not like drinking a blueberry juice or a blueberry flavored uh, soda or something like that. All right, it's a pretty clear color. It's got a good head to it. So that's not bad. What that we at for time here? Twenty seven minutes. Uh, let's keep her going. Shiitake reviews. We yeah, sorry. Um, Shiitake reaction and reviews. Canadian pop culture trailer. Park boys. Or favorite or sorry trailer park boys and favorite movie. Oh, you know, I'm going to, I think he might have said or. I don't know why I have it written down like that, but I think he either said and or or, but I'm going to do both. Um, I love the Trailer Park Boys. Oops, sorry about that. No, I, I love the Trailer Park Boys. I've seen every season except this new one. Um, or the newer one that came out. Um... I've seen all three movies, and the first one was the best. The second one was okay. The third one, eh, wasn't so great. Um, yeah, Bubbles, man. Bubbles is probably the best uh, in that whole uh, show. You, know, you got this, this guy with these big, thick, thick glasses. Got this freaking voice that just makes you freaking laugh. Um, he's like the the two. Or sorry, he's like one of the only one that has like a really heart of gold. The other two are pretty hardcore, uh, cold hearted kind of guys. Not really cold hearted, but they're not. Uh, um, you know, Bubbles he takes care of these cats. And he, uh, he's a very loving kind of person. Whereas Julian and, and, uh, oh, shit. You know, it's been a while since I've watched Taylor Park Boys. So, uh, yeah, excuse me here. Um, fuck, I can't remember the guy's, guy's name now. I used to watch him all the freaking time on Showcase. I had their seasons too I, I lost them but uh, Mr. Leahy and uh, fuck that sucks man I miss the Shayla Park boys I haven't seen them in so freaking long and uh, I would like to get their seasons again get, their, to get the whole box set cause I, I loved Shayla Park boys um, favorite horror movie? Oh boy. Hmm. 
I'm gonna move my chair up closer to you guys. Isn't that better? Yeah. You might see me up close and personal, don't you? Such a handsome devil. Really, really good looking. Yeah. Not like that ugly Ted Bear, say. I'm much better than looking than him, right? You guys agree? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can we all try? Uh, favorite horror mo uh, movie? Wow. There's so many that I liked. Oh, boy. You know, I'm really starting to get into the trauma movies. Um, you know, before I used to, I, I had watched uh, The Avenger. And then they came out with a cartoon from The Avenger. Um, it was the, no, sorry, it was The Toxic Avenger. And then they came out with a uh, a cartoon based on the movie called The Toxic Avengers. And uh, that was freaking hilarious. I, I love those kind of cheesy, um, low-budget horror movies. Um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That was another low-budget uh, horror movie that I, I loved. Gremlins. Well, Gremlins really wasn't really a horror movie. It's more, it was more of a... It was a horror movie um, more for the teenagers, younger, younger teenagers. Maybe even, you know, if your kid wasn't, isn't too scared of stuff like that. Because when I was, when I watched Gremlins, I was probably about eight or nine years old. And I loved it. I didn't get scared at all from it. So, uh. Probably the horror movie that was my number one favorite horror movie would have to be Friday the 13th, part one. Um, I love all the Friday the 13th series, but part one was my favorite. Um, so yeah. I, well... I shouldn't say I liked them all. Jason X, that was horrible. That was, that was just so stupid. Um, they really bombed on that one because the whole you know, sending him to space and then these nanos rebuilding him after he was killed. He turns into a super Jason. Like, come on, no. I think that was a flaw. But, yeah, the first Friday the 13th was just, <laughs> blew me away, scared the freaking shit out of me, loved it, loved it. <clears throat> um, see here, Karen Bo Baron, oh, I know Karen, hey Karen, how's it going? Since you asked Ted Barris this question, <laughs> I'll have to ask you. Now, I want you guys, after this movie, to go, or after this uh, video, to go to uh, Ted Barris's last beer time with Ted. And it's around 42 minutes and some seconds in. I have asked him a, a question and I totally fucked it up because he has covered this issue or the subject um, in prior uh, beer times with Ted and I totally just brain farted on it. Um, felt like a dork for asking it because I knew that he had covered it before. Like why am I asking him again? So, she wanted to know, what are your thoughts on the paranormal, and do you believe in reincarnation? Well, Karen, no, 
I do not believe in reincarnation. Um, I believe that once you're dead, you cannot return to life. Um, but yes, I do believe in the paranormal. Um, I believe in wandering spirits. I believe that uh, these spirits wander on Earth because there's something that they are left there to do. Um, I say this because I've seen some shit. Um, I kid you not. A lot of people are going to think that I'm just nuts, that I'm lost, like just I'm mental or I'm seeing shit. But I have seen some scary, scary stuff. Um, I've seen... I've seen a um, few times growing up this uh, this woman. Um, there's a... In between uh, where I live and uh, this city called Moose Jaw. There's a very steep hill. And three times I saw this lady as you're going down the hill and coming up. I would see her off on the side of the road. And she was always standing away from me. I um, always had her back turned toward me. And it's long dark dark hair jet black hair and red dress and it was weird because it didn't look like she was a solid object you know it she was you could see through her but it wasn't uh how should I should say it? it's it was almost like she was a mist kind of shape or, or uh, I don't know really what to to how to say it but um, yeah we get up to the the top of the hill and she would be right there you would never I would never be able to see her face um, because I would pass by and I'd say look she's gone totally fucking gone um yeah, I know a lot of people are gonna think I'm, I'm bonkers. That I'm, I was smoking too much weed that day or something. But no, I I swear to God, three times I saw her. Um, scare the shit out of me. You just said the freaking goosebumps. Every time I would see her, cause I would I'd be driving and coming up that hill and I'll. Oh, shit, there she is. And no choice but just to keep on going. Cause I, I didn't want to turn around and you know, go back where I was coming from. And that, and then I, uh, me and a couple friends. <sighs> when we were younger, we used to play with the Ouija board. I shouldn't say play. We used to, we used to fuck around with the Ouija board. You don't play the Ouija board. It's, it's not a game, and uh, it's a bad thing to play with, to, to, to screw around with. Um, any young younger uh, listeners or viewers out there, do not go anywhere near a Ouija board. It's just nothing but bad news. Um, I've had some, I had some bad freaking, uh, juju from a uh, freaking, uh, uh, a Ouija board. Um, really bad experiences. Um, Ouija boards are n nothing but evil. They, evil thrives on Ouija boards. Because they can open up portals, they can open up gates, um, and let them let them out, let them through. And yes, I do believe in demons. I believe in evil spirits. 
because if you believe in any kind of spirits, any kind of paranormal, then you have to believe that there is a, a good and a bad. So, yeah. Um, I definitely have strong feelings with the paranormal. <sighs> well, that ends today's Beer Time with Mike. Got about this much beer. Yeah, you think I can drink all that? Oh, that's only half a freaking mug. Let's, let's try this, yes. <sighs> Not bad. I'm no John Madman. Metal Man Man. Metal Man Man! Now that guy can freaking chug a beer. But yes, that ends today's <coughs> I don't know. With me and beer, they don't give me beer doesn't give me burps. Pop, I can freaking just belch a good one. Beer there's not not a great of burps. But yeah, that ends uh, beer time with Mike. Number four, I'm on a roll. Soon I'll have as many as uh, Ted has right now. I think he's got 71. So, and yeah, you know what? I want to say one last thing to the trolls, to the bullies out there that I think I'm lame, think I'm boring, think I'm a copycat think that uh, just because Ted Barris is doing a beer time with Ted and uh, right grinds my gears that nobody else can do it otherwise they're a, a copycat you know what fuck you fuck you I talked to Ted personally and he said that he was fine with it so you know if you don't like what I do Get the fuck off my channel and find something else to watch. There's millions of other videos on YouTube that you can watch. So with that, you know what? This is Crazy Mike D. Signing off. You guys have a great night. Ciao.